All right, I'm going to try something different this morning, and I'm just going to go right into this video here. And I'm just going to go, and I've not listened to this guy at all. All I can tell you from the get go is that there is no millennial reign of anybody. It's not in Revelation 20, it's not anywhere in the Bible. Uh, this idea of a millennial reign it's just not there you can read it for yourself okay um, it it's just not there there's nothing here in Revelation 20 or anywhere in the Bible that suggests a millennial reign but let's listen to what this guy has to say and I have no idea what he's gonna say so let's go Somebody up, let them know that they need to subscribe to LG Ministries YouTube channel. It is a word and even of this teaching because it gives us so much insight and information concerning the end times. And I just believe that there's that there's a, 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 a desperate need and cry and uh, a desire for people to know concerning the end times. And so. Uh, please do that. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tammy, Tamika. Hey, darling. Mother Tucker, you be hanging here, Amanda, my niece. And awesome slash amen. Bless you. So, Sean, Emma, on in this morning. Being amen. Bless Listen to the millennial reign or the millennial kingdom um, as, the, as, it, as it pertains to the scriptures. Amen. In Revelation 20, for a thousand years. For the thousand years that Christ reigns, Amen. After, after the Great Tribulation, we're going to talk about that a little. Wow! Bit. I mean, to me, that's amazing. First of all, there's no mention of Christ reigning a thousand years. It's incredible. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Does not say that Christ reigns a thousand years. Are you insane? really and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years no mention at all of Jesus reigning a thousand years and no mention at all of a seven-year tribulation it's not in the Bible it's not in the Bible anywhere it's not Daniel 9 I showed that to you just the other day it's not anywhere in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's not anywhere in the Bible at all. So let's just throw all these false teachings into one video. Let's go. A little bit, we're going to talk, amen, from the perspective of understanding who we are and where we'll be and how we'll be participating in that awesome <clears throat> All right, just in case we, you happen to be new, just in case. I mean, this stuff is so simple. Let's go over this. All right, so Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is the end of the world. Very simple. That's it. And we get this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. In fact, the disciples come to Jesus and ask him, What will be the end of the world? What will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus lays down some things that we can expect but then at the end of the world there's going to be uh, the sun is going to be darkened the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven uh, shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken all right again I want to point out that I did this yesterday I believe if I remember correctly I pointed out this verse here men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth right here's the 
the, the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring everybody's gonna know at that moment it's the end of the world all right real simple so when it's the end of the world Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he gathers together his elect that means we're lifted up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we are changed forever we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible we are changed into our glorified bodies lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord first the dead in Christ shall rise then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air now when that's those of us that are saved now the unsaved are gathered at our feet all right and this is this is right here in uh, Revelation 20 verse 8 to gather them they are gathered at our feet okay now this is parallel with what we read in Revelation 3 I'm gonna work backwards okay and all I'm doing is connecting the dots I'm sharing the same thing it's over and over all throughout the Bible I will make them to come and worship before thy feet all right so our enemy is going to be gathered at our feet pretty simple this goes all the way back to Psalm 110 the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool so our enemy is gathered at our feet when we're up in the air with the Lord all right very simple stuff let's eat go back even further all right in case <clears throat> in case you're new to hearing I don't know why anybody would would be new to hearing this this has been in the Bible the whole time Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and that's God talking to the serpent and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel now that's when Jesus is up in the air the serpent is down below he's gonna stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and destroy all sin forever death sin pain sorrow all that's gonna be done away with forever all right and we're gonna be up caught up in the air with him when this happens all these prophecies from Revelation 20 to Genesis 3 it's all the same thing all you have to do is connect the dots all right it's interesting here I will put enmity between thee and the woman all right the woman now think about Jesus what Jesus was born of a woman between thy seed and her seed her seed think about it Jesus never had a physical father so he only came from the woman now it's interesting because the woman only came from man right and it says thou shalt bruise his heel his forehead is going to bruise his heel right sort of like uh, you know I might bruise somebody's fist when they punch me in the face right you know um, but <laughs> his heel it's between thy seed and her seed thou shalt bruise his head or thou shalt bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel interesting right obviously talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and this is all parallel all I have to do is connect the dots all right and they are gathered at our feet fire comes down from God and devours them all so this is judgment day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right and verse 11 here we have Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven all right now um, this is judgment the judgment is very simple are you saved or are you not saved it's not how good have you been and how bad have you been that's not judgment it's are you saved are you not saved do you have sin or do you have no sin you have one sin you're going to hell forever you have zero sin you're giving your you have um, 
everlasting life and you will be transformed into um, your glorified body okay it's really that simple it's harvest time it's when the wheat and the tares are separated it's all the same event it's the great day of the Lord all right and the only way to have zero sin is if the blood of Jesus covers your sin all your sin right so uh, it, it's that simple it's that easy to understand and then once this happens once all uh, everything is destroyed below at our feet there's a new heaven and a new earth and there's no more pain no more sorrow no more suffering no more death behold I make all things new and the new city of God will come down out of heaven onto the earth or will be a new earth new heaven uh, no more need of the Sun and so on and so forth and uh, this is what we're putting our hope in right a new world a better place and this will happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we go back to Luke 21 if I'm remembering correctly it says when you see all these things happen lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh right there and when these things begin begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh that's it fellas there's no more there's no more of the world that we're living in now it's gone it's done it's over it's the end right so there's no more pain no more suffering and there's no more sex talked about that yesterday no more Humpty Dumpty all right and uh, just in case um, go to first John 2 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father It but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever to do the will of God is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ now right here it tells you this is not a different end of the world this is not like uh, like a separate end of the world man just connect the dots man when it's the end of the world the lust of the flesh it's done away with the world passes away in the lust thereof just like Jesus says in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven right everything's gonna be new everything's gonna be much much better all right if that bothers you then heaven's not for you if you have to have sex buddy live it up right now because it's coming to an end. It's times, eh? time, those times, amen. So God bless you. All right, listen, uh, we're going to get started this morning. We do love you. We do appreciate you. Man, listen, what an awesome time we had on Sunday. Man, somebody need to just give God some praise for an impact for an encounter with God. He wants to leave. Nobody wants to go home. Those that may have to leave uh, the bus that and the remnant of the of the of the glory of God, the Shekinah glory and glory of God. Uh, we just gonna help the of the of the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God. Uh, Shekinah. We just gonna have to stay in the stay in the same experience of God being released. Amen. We experiencing an encounter with God. Amen. Two Sundays ago, they're experiencing the same thing. Uh, they're at Highway Ministries in Hampton. Our lives and God will continue to move and. Now listen to me. Uh, let's let to tell you what. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty master, we give you praise. We give you honor. Now listen to me. I, I shared with you at the offset of this study about two weeks ago. I shared with you at the offset of this study that watch this. That there are a lot of people, a lot of born again believers, those that believe already, that do not want to talk about this. I shared that with you. That they don't want to talk about this. They don't want to hear this. But watch this. Um, they don't want to be a part of even the conversation with this. Want 
they don't want to be in the conversation with they don't want you to have a conversation concerning end times and concerning um, eschatology and the study of the end times and it's so unfortunate and it's not that okay took me um, 10 years to learn how to say eschatology the end times and when end times I can say that that's easy end times no problem eschatology that's Oh, that's not in the Bible, and that's hard for me to say. I'm not very smart, so let's go. Studying the mysteries of the end times, you literally can discern the mystery of the not knowing, or you can discern through the Spirit. You can have a sense of discernment uh, discernment through the Spirit, and you can sense the mysteries that have not been unfolded. You can, you can literally sense the mysteries that have not been unfolded to us to give revelation and clarity to that there is only a, a certain level of insight that God has given us to or information that God has exposed us to, amen, to have to make sure that we are able to identify with the end times and watch this and heed all the warnings and hearken diligently unto the voice of God. That's so important that, and I, and I wanted to mention that on last week, is, and that, that's so important for you to understand. It is, it is so important, except you, you've you heard me say this multiple times, over and over, and I have to repeat it. When we are giving warnings, we are giving warnings of deceivers. All right, now, the only way to be able to discern who a deceiver or what a deception is, if you will, is if you know the truth. If you don't know the truth, you're not going to be you're not going to know the error right and now you think about who gives you the truth and Jesus gives us the truth we are of God he that knoweth God hears us he that is not of God hears not us hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error who are we that's very important. We are of God. Now, just saying we are of God does not make you of God. You hear Jesus say, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. So what is the difference? The difference is the same difference that it's always been. And the difference... Oops, what? Oh... There is no Hebrew 11. They took it out of the Bible. They added Hebrews 11. Okay. Now, go. I'm sorry. We'll go to uh, Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith. Catch that? By faith, Noah, being warned of God, things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark for, uh, to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness of which is by faith. It's always been about faith. Always been about faith all the way back to the beginning of the world. It's always been about faith and by grace are you saved through faith, right? So it's always been about faith and you think even today, even this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart that don't believe. So if you don't have faith, the veil is upon your heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, meaning when you shall have faith then the veil is taken away now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty alright freedom so this is crucial in my opinion my very very strong opinion you must have faith in order to see what the scripture says if you do not believe the Bible you hold in your hands, 
how can you rightly say you believe in the Word of God? All right. So you must have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands, and then your eyes will be opened. The veil will be taken away, and you'll be able to see the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Understand. That is so important for you to understand your daily walk with God, that, that there's a place of mystery with God. There is a place where, watch this, there's a place where you, the, the unknown is there, but watch this, the faith in God is there. And that's why that's why he said we walk by faith and not by sight. There we go. And so we have to we have to expose ourselves to 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 the power to the power and the presence of God to the promises of God, and we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus said something to the disciples. He said, "It's given unto us, it's given unto you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom, to know the mysteries of the kingdom." I believe that there are so many mysteries to the kingdom. And I believe that we're just scratching the surface. I don't even believe that we even gone uh, deep enough yet. I believe that there is even greater, deeper teachings and more even in revelation. Uh, that I, I think that's true in a sense. And now I just showed you the mystery of the end of the world. Right? I showed you how simple it is. Jesus comes in the clouds. It is the end of the world. Judgment day. Judgment is, are you saved? Are you not saved? The unsaved is wiped out completely. The saved are changed into their glorified bodies, new city, God comes down from heaven, there's a new heaven and a new earth, and there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more death, uh, everything is new. That's the mystery of the end of the world. I showed it to you, it's real simple. Now what happens is we have a world full of liars and deceivers, people that don't know, and therefore what they do is they listen to somebody else and they echo or parrot what they heard somebody else say. That's why we got all this deception in the world because people are not trusting the Bible they hold in their hands right here in 2 Timothy 3. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're deceived because they do not believe the Bible they hold in their hands. And let's use uh, Revelation 20 as a great example of this because nowhere in Revelation 20 does it suggest or imply anything at all about this idea of a millennial reign. It's not there. There's no 1,000 year reign of anybody no 1,000 year reign of Christ we don't reign 1,000 years it's not there clearly this is speaking of this time period where we reign with Christ with Christ they lived and reigned with Christ we are priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and of course if you know your Bible you know Jesus never stops reigning he shall reign over the house of the I'm sorry he should reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end I mean that should be obvious there's multiple scriptures to support that this is not something that you need to tear out of your Bible okay this does not conflict with Revelation 20 at all. All right, let's go. And understand it. And even in, you know, uh, I was mentioning to you that I would love to be able to workshop this about three days. Take about a three-day workshop and just deal with this in depth and then deal with this, with this individually. And when I say individually, deal with uh, for the perspective of how do we walk uh, circumspectly. Watch this. Circumspectly, the scripture says, how do we walk in conjunction and in accordance, watch this, to the Word of God and to the Word that we know. Uh, through this teaching and through these lessons, your walk with God should have literally begun to enhance and to begin to grow stronger. In fact, your relationship and dedication to God should intensify a little bit because of... I don't know about intensify, man. That, that denotes stress. You no need to be stress. If the Son of Man shall be if, if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free 
Indeed, intensify denotes stress, does it not? You can relax, man. Relax, huh? If the sun therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free. Indeed, relax. Uh, watch this. You're understanding some of the mysteries of the kingdom, and you literally having the information fed to you, or having the word taught to you, so that you will be able to identify with some of the things that are happening. Watch this, or will be happening in the end times. Uh, watch this. And there's so much to it. I'm just skimming the surface here. Watch we're just, this. We're just going over just a few things. Watch and this. So this morning. Uh, I'm going to begin to talk about, and I'll probably take about two mornings and talk about the millennial reign of Watch Christ this. and the perspective from which we need to come and to understand it. Uh, the millennial reign of Christ is the 1,000 years, is the 1,000 years of peace on earth. Watch this. Watch this. 1,000 years of peace. Now, I went over this yesterday where a lady admits that there are going to be people having sex and unsaved people living during this thousand years of quote unquote peace and that's obviously bat turd crazy it is absolute didn't i just show you the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the world but it's not of the Father, excuse me, I got it all wrong. See, this is why I got it. one, read the Bible more so I can remember this stuff. And then two, uh, I got to read the Bible more. And plus, I got to study it and read it. Okay, so love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, watch this, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And we can go... To Mark 13 for example and the disciples ask him what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world and the first thing Jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you and then he describes the end of the world is when the Sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and the Son of man the sign of the Son of Man shall be shall um, be seen in the clouds in other words Jesus is coming in the clouds with great power and glory and his angels shall gather together the elect and we shall be in a moment changed in the twinkling of an eye and we shall be caught up together first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and our enemies gathered at our feet and destroyed and then we are set back down on earth, a new heaven and a new earth. All right, very, very simple stuff. In other words, there is no more sex after that point. No more sex. All right, so you're going to claim there's a thousand years of peace. The implication, obviously, is that this peaceful time period is coming to an end. Now, what I want people to do that teach this, admit. Admit that you believe there's sex during this thousand years of peace. Just, I mean, that's a big step. <laughs> it really is, man. I believe that. I fully believe that. You have to get over that. If you can't get over the idea that there is no more sex after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to be able to see it. It's a worldview problem. After the tribulation, after the tribulation, after the desolation, abomination. And then, of course, okay, so you got a thousand years of peace, and then what? All hell breaks loose, and there's no more peace? And then what, man? It's all over for us. We're all dying. 
Is that it? I mean, come on. The abomination desolation of the temple and after <clears> the, <throat> the judgment of the nations where the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> you, what in the world did, did this guy just say? Hold on a second. ...and talk about the millennial reign of Christ and the perspective from which we need to come and to understand it. Uh, the millennial reign of Christ is the 1,000 years, is the 1,000 years of peace on earth after the tribulation, after the tribulation, after the desolation, abomination, the abomination of desolation okay. of the temple, and after the, the, the judgment of the nations where... No. No, you can't reconcile that. Get your fingers out of your nose and look at Revelation 20. You've got the thousand years where we live and reign with Christ. Why is it a thousand years? Because it's from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his promised return. There's been no other time like this time period right now where we have uh, witnessed the death and resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ right now we are priest of God and of Christ right now we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ it's available for anybody whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life this is a unique time period different than it was before the birth of baby Jesus and certainly different than what it will be after his return all right and now you got judgment Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, and whose face the earth and heaven fled away. When the sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God. This is judgment. All right. And judgment is, are you saved? Are you not saved? If you're saved, you're caught up together, you're changed in the twinkling of an eye and first the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and then our enemies gather at our feet the unsaved and they are destroyed forever that's the judgment now this is another way of saying the very same thing whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and again the second death right now the second death has no power over you that are saved all right the second death is the destruction of the soul fear not him which can destroy the body but not the soul fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell all right and that's God all right and that's coming on judgment day for those who are not saved and if you're saved right now blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power watch this the second coming of christ comes even when christ comes amen and he literally watch this defeat all the armies of the earth all the kings which is known at armageddon there at the valley of megiddo Amen. Uh, he literally defeats them, and after the second coming of Christ, and after the judgment of all the nations, then comes the one thousand years. No, the one <laughs> you got it wrong, man. You're watching too many Hollywood movies. You flipped it. You got it backwards. You got this thousand-year time period. It clearly, is about us right now from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return and then you have the judgment you have the destruction the end of all evil forever I mean how can you read just Revelation 20 if that's the only thing you've ever read in your whole entire life there's no possible way you could come up with this conclusion and then you couple that with the entire T watch this of the Bible you read the whole entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation it's crystal clear when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world all right watch this 1,000 years of, of, of millennial reign of Jesus Christ now that 1,000 year reign
rain, and I want you to get this. And, and, and I'm, now watch this. Now I want you to get this. Now come on, hold on to your seat, fellas. Here we go. Come on, watch it. I'm going to use maybe two mornings to talk about it, and I'm going to take my time to talk about it. But I want you to get this. The air just went out of my tire, kid. I want you to get the understanding that that 1,000 years is prophecy being fulfilled literally from the Old Testament all the way into the New Testament. Except, no, there's just one insy bitsy little problem with that. And it's the fact that it might seem minor, but it's kind of a big deal. Now watch this. There's nothing in the Old Testament at all that talks about a 1,000 year time period. Nothing. I mean, you could search all day. I could try to show you. I can't show it to you because it's not there. There's nothing there. Nothing at all about a 1,000 year time period. Nothing at all. I can't point to something that doesn't exist because it's not anywhere. The only reference to this idea of a thousand year time period is in Revelation 20. It's the only place. So when you're claiming it's in the Old Testament, it's not there. You're making up stuff. Now you could start reading from the Old Testament, but those Old Testament verses that you're reading make no mention whatsoever, watch this, of this idea of a thousand year period. Okay? all the way into the book of Revelation and into the end times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is literally... I hear, I hear, I hear what you're saying. That is literally, watch this, the prophecy being fulfilled. The millennial now watch this, watch this. Millennial reign of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Amen. The 1,000 years. Amen. We got to get some amens in here. Come on. Amen. Watch this. After the second coming of Christ. Amen. It's literally the prophecy. Amen. Come on. Let's get some more amens in there. Come on. That has been fulfilled down through scripture. Down through scripture. Watch this. To give Watch insight, this, boys. To give insight to the promises of God given to the people of God through his covenant. It is the millennial reign of the church. All right, first of all, do you know what the covenant is? You know, I wonder. I really do. I'm not kidding you. I wonder if people know what the covenant is and it's very simple the covenant was to Abraham and his seed I mean do you even know that did you know the promises of everlasting life was to Abraham and his seed I, I mean we could it's easy to uh, you know you read the book of uh, the book of Genesis it's amazing it's Incredible! I highly recommend reading the book of Genesis. It's a wonderful, fantastic book. Don't take very long either. It takes maybe five minutes a chapter. All right, and it's full of great stuff. It's incredible. Now we learn that the promises are to Abraham and his seed. Now. Think about this. Watch this now. Give me some amens. Come on. Galatians 3. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Promises and covenant. Same thing. He saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Can I get an amen? Come on, amen. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. That's the covenant. God has promised us everlasting life in a better world just as Moses led his people out of Egypt into a better place took 
They he took them out of a wicked situation. So also will our Lord Jesus Christ take us out of this wicked world and deliver us into a much better world where there is no more sin. No more death, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more crying, no more pain, no more death. All of that will be done away with. And that includes uh, sex. All right, no more sex. And if you don't like it, you can stay here. Jesus Christ in the capital of Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. Amen. The promised land. The promised land to God. The promised land is not here yet, fella. All right, the promised land is a land where there is no more sin. Over there in the Middle East right now, if that was the promised land, you'd already be sitting there. But you don't believe it yourself because that land is full of sin, full of wickedness. The whole world is full of sin and full of wickedness. All right. And um, Jesus Christ has promised to deliver us from this wicked world. Chosen people. And it is the, it is the, it is the, uh, it is the. Uh, watch this now. Watch this. Come on. Give me an amen. Center of all the, all the, all the e e eternal. Um, covenants that have been released from Genesis all the way down even in through Revelation and it is the place where we come together listen to me and this is why you got to understand that that Israel is all about land it's all about land and it's all about the people the chosen people of God and yes there are some discrepancies yes there has been some contamination of the land yes there has been some there has been some misunderstandings, yes. Uh, I can't take this no more. That land over there is wicked. Those people over there are wicked. Right now, I am a stranger in a strange land. This whole world is a strange land. I'm a foreigner to this world. This world is not mine. And that includes the Middle East, the whole Middle East. And that includes the whole world. I'm a stranger in a strange land, a foreigner. This is not my world. This is not my home. This is not my land. The land, the city that I'm from, is in heaven. Right? The new city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. This is my residency. It's not over there in the Middle East anywhere. Well, there's nothing special about there's that land is not going to be preserved man the whole world is going to be destroyed there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth man there's nothing sacred over there that's more sacred than the city of god that's coming down from heaven oh, watch this uh, now you know what don't watch this i think i've had enough I gave this gentleman 13 minutes to say something he didn't say nothing nothing at all nothing that was you know a thousand years of peace and then it's over and what all hell breaks loose who knows these guys don't talk about it I found a lady yesterday that talked about it talked to say she said that there's gonna be sex there's gonna be unsafe people living after the return of Jesus it's crazy um, but at least she was honest you know, I have to give her credit. So many people here, watch this now, give me an amen. They don't want to talk about it. They don't. Maybe he does go on to talk about it. Maybe I'm being uh, too critical. Uh, maybe I'm not being fair. If I'm not being fair, let me know. But I've, I've seen this over and over and over and over and over again. People talking about millennial reign or millennium reign. What is the millennium reign? Oh, is that different than the millennial reign? Well, maybe I'm all wrong. Watch this. All right, can I get an amen? All these guys. Well, this guy got it right. Huh? Come on, give me an amen. All these guys got it wrong. All of them. Every 
single one of them is there not anybody out there that can see this people love to talk about it it's obvious everybody it seems like a lot of people want to know about the end times and the end of the world what's going to happen even the disciples came to Jesus and said what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and Jesus told them this is recorded in Matthew Mark and Luke and it's very clear it's very simple it's not complicated it's not rocket science at the end of the world is judgment day the great day of the Lord are you saved are you not saved and then after this everything is gonna be new this is going to be the promised land that was promised to us all the way back to Genesis and to Abraham and his seed the promised land the promise of everlasting life it's not of this world at all this world is a strange strange world can I get an amen